Okay, the uh, ethos, pathos, and logos. Um, you've heard this before. Um, it really isn't that complex outside of the, you know, the Greek origin of the words might freak you out. I never use those words. Yeah, but you talk about emotion. You put that in your writing, you know, so you'll be able to, you know, see the ethos of that uh, in a little bit. Um, we talk about uh, the history of it, where, you know, the Greek roots and stuff, and you've heard of Aristotle, I believe. Um, you know, the art of observing, in any case, the available means of persuasion. Everything is an argument, whether it's spoken, written, or it's a visual. And so we're trying to, uh, to put a point across. Okay. Um, we have the ethos, pathos, logos, triangle. The first is logos, okay? And this appeals to logic. So hopefully you can see the root of logos logic in there. Um, it makes sense. We're going to look at some commercials and kind of add, uh, try to figure out what are they appealing to? The emotional, the tugging at the heartstrings or making a cry or whatever, or make you laugh, or are they appealing to your logic of you, you know, they're making sense to you, okay? Um, the reasonable premises and proofs, developing ideas with appropriate details. Um, did anybody watch the debates the other night? Okay, some of you. Um, some of that, remember, there was a lot of rhetoric. I mean, that's all it is, is words. And, and they're trying to persuade you for what? For money? No. Their vote. Your vote. And so with that, uh, they try to appeal to you on a number of things. Every time they mention a story about when I was in Ohio, when I met Janie Smith, and she was talking about how people were out of work and blah, blah, blah. Well, gee, what do you think they're trying to get out of you? An emotional response. Okay? When they start running off facts and, and stats and like, here's this, is, if you will for him, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And so you see that that is appealing to your logic. And so they do various types of rhetoric to try to persuade you for that, uh, for that vote. Uh, ethics, okay, ethos, pathos, logos, ethics, uh, you know, appeals to the moral code, uh, connection to the audience that this is right. Okay, there's a morality to it. Uh, appeals to the authority of the speaker. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see that with uh, some of the commercials. You know, putting an authoritative figure up there adds some credibility to what they say, or that's what they told. Okay, if I'm up here to try to get you to buy something that for some health thing, and I'm an actor, or you could have, you know, the Surgeon General of, the, of you know, the top doctor in the country, well, which one do you think has more credibility? Probably that one individual. And so that's where um, you know it appeals to the authority. Um, and that's you know having the president or his opponent up there. In, you know that should be an authoritative figure. And so we have the ethos, the pathos, um, and logos. Um, pathos is the emotions. I may have said the wrong one a little bit ago. Um, you would think emotions is, is the ethos, but look at ethics. Ethics. Okay, so we have logic, ethics, morality or uh, motion. Um, you'll see this, um, you know, it's powerful. It's very manipulative. Um, you see this a lot. Have you ever seen those commercials? Just one dollar a day will help feed a starving child and, and whatever. Well, they show you pictures of those kids, don't they? Doesn't that just kill you? Like, really? They don't have a place to, to eat and drink? And, I mean, it's just, it's rough. Why do you think they're doing that? Well, they want your money. Okay. They want you to, then, you know, to be a good service and such, but they're trying to get that heart strength, tug at your heart strength, um, in order to, uh, to, uh, to to elicit that reaction, that response, whatever that would be, whether it's money or action. Uh, often uses figurative language, um, you know, very descriptive, maybe comparing certain things. Your figurative language, your rhetorical devices that, uh, the, you know, that we uh, have talked about in setting this stuff up. Um, you know, John F. Kennedy. We've all heard this gentleman. You know, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Let's look at that from each of these viewpoints. Okay, from the first, the logic. It proposes a solution. So it's, it's logical. Okay, so he is speaking to us and he's trying to, to make sense to us. Ask not what you can do, you know, oh, it's okay. Um, you know, don't depend on your country, that's what you can do for it. The ethos, the ethics and morality, it highlights the ethical qualities of the speaker and audience. Uh, it's your president. Okay. It's your president, so that's an authoritative individual. But then your ultimate pathos, it appeals to emotional patriotism. It wants you to, 
you know, fly that flag out there and go out and do whatever you have to do to make that country better. And so we can see that this one sentence, that if this was some bum on the side of the street with a sign, with this, you know, hold it up, he just might go, oh, well, that's a good saying, or that guy's nuts. But you have the president saying the exact same words, and that's where the credibility comes in the, in the ethos and such. Um, and so this is stuff that, um, you know, when you are analyzing writing, this was one of the steps, you know. Uh, Stephen King, you know, his thing, was he appealing to, you know, uh, you know, a, a emotional response? Was he being illogical? Well, he was trying to entertain. Well, good. But how was he doing? And as we go through these various readings, you should be able to, uh, to answer that. And it should be one obvious, but, you know, there's a possibility it could be a, a little of both. We see that in that one line from JFK that it's, uh, you know, a number of them. Um, what I'd like to go over now is the, uh, you guys probably won't be able to, so spin your screens, you won't be able to follow along with this because there are a couple videos. Okay, we talked about rhetoric already. This is just a nice little review and study. You know, the study and art of using language effectively. Explain the rhetoric using this advertisement. Can you see that? Just the freedom? Do you notice what's wrong with that? Okay, misspelled. Freedom. And then at the bottom, you might not be able to say it says, don't vote. Okay, if you think you have freedom, you don't vote, well, then you're dumb, is what it's saying. Okay. Yeah, you're, you know, this is the land of the free. You're, you're free. To, you know, you have freedom. You're an idiot if you don't vote. And coming up with, uh, you know, each year. I mean, there was one, you know, Puff Daddy, Pete Diddy, Sean Combs, whatever he's going by now. You know, a few elections ago, he was having, you know, vote or die was his, was his get out the vote. You know, MTV had rock the vote. They have all these different catchy things to get people out to, to vote for their, their, their government. Um, just a simple sign, just you know, could explain a lot. And it's just one word. Well, I guess that's the words at the bottom and such. Um, now this particular uh, commercial is a Pringle commercial from the, I think it's the 70s. Um, as we watch this, and I'll get the lights in a little bit, but as you watch this, I want you to, to think about, you know, who is the audience? Okay, what's the tone of this? And those steps, those questions that we're asking now, that's the exact same type of questions you're going to ask when you have the written papers. But this is just in visual. It's an advertisement. So what's the purpose? To sell. Okay, now it was a commercial that's almost 40 years old. Do our commercials nowadays look a little different? Yes. yes, but the message is still the same. The purpose, they still want to make money and such. Who is the audience of that one? Who is the intended audience? Who? Everyone? You think that's for kids? Moms. Who was that directed towards? Women. Why do you think women were the focal point of that 40 years ago? They did all the shopping. Women did all the shopping. Okay. They're not going to put it there for kids. Have you guys ever, well, yes, you have. Uh, if you watch Cartoon Network or you watch uh, Saturday morning cartoons, what are most of those commercials? Towards kids. My gosh, I watch uh, Star Wars Clone Wars with my kids. They moved it to Saturday mornings now. Every commercial on Cartoon Network for that is some Legos, some this, that, some dress your doll. I mean, it is crazy. Well, why do you think they do that? By accident? No, they know who their audience is. They know what the intended uh, purpose is. Uh, the tone, okay? The tone, is it kind of humorous in nature? Okay, wow, check out that can. You know, those the reactions of these people were just kind of silly. Their eyes, boing, boing, popping out. Because the chips in a can, that just blows their mind. You can fit as many chips, and I think um, we had a tech issue, so you didn't get to see it. But they say that the, you know, there's as many you know, chips in that one can of Pringles as there is in a whole bag. I don't know if I agree with that one. Will you? All the bags are like half air. It is. Well, that's true. Nowadays, they're half air. Don't you normally plow through a Pringles pretty quickly? I can't plow through a bag of potato or burritos. I can't. Uh, but cool ranch. Uh, but anyway, you know, what emotions is this appealing to? I mean, I guess humor. I mean, it's not a hysterical laugh out loud. I mean, that one wouldn't even make it on the air nowadays. But, you know, it has, it has humor appeal. Um, you know, the ethos, pathos, logos of it. Think about it. Okay? We don't have any doctors or anything on it. But yet, you know, look at all of these moms and how blown away they are by it. That's kind of credible 
for moms who are going out, you know, and looking for, um, you know, the, a new potato chip. If they're looking at a roll of potato chips, like, oh yeah, remember that commercial with all those? Yeah. Maybe that would sway them a little bit. Or I haven't heard of these. Oh, I've heard Pringles. That's that cool. Maybe that is enough for them to purchase it. Okay. Um, and we do have that kind of emotional appeal. People like potato chips. Okay, they're salty, they're good snacks to have, whether it's a card game or, or whatever, watching TV. Um, and so we can, you, know, you can apply it and break it down. Um, you know, if you had more time, break down actually what they said, some of the wordings uh, here and there, um, in order to uh, you know, better uh, analyze the rhetoric of this. Okay? There is one additional one, but it's not on the PowerPoint. Bear with me. Called Volkswagen. You may or may not have seen this one uh, on TV. Who's the audience? Think about what the tone is. What is there an emotional appeal, or is it just you know strictly trying to sell a car? You have, unless you've seen this before, you had no idea what that commercial is about. You're like, is there a new Star Wars movie coming out? Oh God, no. You know, I would think yes, that'd be awesome. But um, for the purpose of this, you had no idea. And then you're like, oh, okay, it's a car commercial. So the purpose is to do what? Sell a car. It's to feature the remote startup, right? That's the, that's the purpose. But did you see how they went about it? Aw, oh, how cute. They put in the illusion, remember that was a rhetorical device that you would have to talk about. You have no Star Wars, what Star Wars is, and pretty much everybody, even if you haven't seen a movie, you know who Darth Vader is, or you can make the connection, okay? And the whole thing with you know being able to control things, hopefully you were able to pick up on that. You know, try, Even if you miss the movie, you recognize who it is. And you see him trying to do things to the food, and it doesn't work, so the mom just slides it there, and he puts his hand on his helmet, which was adorable. He tries to knock over, you know, the, the dog or the doll, you know, that type of thing. So you can tell that he's trying to inflict something, even if you don't know the connection with the movie. Okay, uh, but the emotional appeal, uh, the everybody, like I said, unless you don't have a soul, you know, chuckles when that car starts up because oh my God, it worked. And then what does he do? He turns to the house. Did anybody see that? And then you just see the dad look at the mom and just kind of raise his eyebrow. What, a, what an awesome commercial. Okay, I'm biased beyond belief. But breaking it down with the emotional appeal, okay, is pretty sweet on that. Okay, that's a wonderful example. Um, and the way that I just broke down, you know, key little things that happen, you know, that's kind of the, the mindset that you have to go uh, and take it down even further in discussing, you know, the rhetorical analysis when we get to writing because we're not going to be analyzing commercials. But it's the same type of question, the tone. Who is the audience? Uh, families? So I can play pranks on my kids? Well, no. But look, you can have remote startup. You think that's going to be popular come January, February, for those of you who do not park indoors? Yeah. You have ice on the window, you turn your car on and let it run. You don't have to run outside? Uh, yeah. Those of you that are impacted that way, you probably had that thought the first time you heard about remote start. Wait a minute, so I don't have to get out and turn my car on and let it heat up. Think about up in Alaska or Canada. I don't know how big Volkswagen is up there in the tundra and forest and stuff. Probably not huge. But that ability to have that that coolness. Okay. Um, those are the only things I wanted to focus on regarding the, uh, the uh, commercials. But again, these last three or four days, I've been focusing, trying to help you focus on not looking at what they're saying, but how they're saying it. And each of those activities has done it on a, a little bit more, um, you know, specific level.